Cookie Monster or Cookie? Hi, Oliver. Oh, that's so sweet of you to want to give Cookie Monster a cookie. But uh, right now, we know should share food. Yeah, yeah, we know want to spread little germies. Yeah, that's also why we wash hands before we eat. But here's the good news. We may not be able to share food, but we can still have a cookie together like this. Cheers, Oliver. Cookie. Ow, um, nom, 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 nom. Oh, ah, delicious. Yeah. Okay, back to you, Doc. Thanks, Cookie Monster, and welcome back to our town hall, the ABCs of COVID-19. And we're here with Abby Kadabi from Sesame Street. <laughs> hey, 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 Rudy, I'll be right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Rudy, stay out of my room. <laughs> you. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry about that. Hi, Erica. Hi, hi Dr. Sanjay. Um, that was my little brother, Rudy. <laughs> Abby, have you and Rudy been spending a lot of time together? Uh, well, <laughs> since we've been at home, we have uh, play time together, learning time together, story time together, movie time together, outside time together, arts and crafts time together, and uh, dinner time together. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're spending the whole day together. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I love spending time with my brother. It's just that, well, I really miss my friends. I know, Abby, it's tough. I miss my friends, too. Yeah? Well, I, I hope I get to play with them again soon because, well, sometimes, um, sometimes, uh, I get a little frustrated with my brother. <laughs> I can understand that, Abby. I can appreciate that. We are all spending a lot of time together without being able to go places like school or, or do normal activities, like have play dates with our friends. Yeah, yeah, and it's not that I don't like having him around. I love my brother, he's hilarious. It's just that, well, sometimes I just want to do my own things. And you know, time alone is also important for adults and kids, Abby. At my house, we have alone time where everyone can do something that they want, like maybe draw a picture or, or have a snack or oh, Or look at a picture book or something? Yes, exactly. And it's so important that we have those moments when we're alone so we can recharge. But we also have to remember that we're all going through the same things together and we're doing it in some pretty close spaces. Yeah. So, uh, I, I shouldn't get upset with my brother, Rudy? Well, it's, it's okay, uh, Abby, to get upset. It's natural even. Kids and adults are going through a lot right now. But I think it's, it's important that we're aware of our emotions. Sometimes mm -hmm. you're going to need to say, I'm sorry. Sometimes you may ask for a do-over. Yeah, a do-over. Well, I take Dr. Sanjay and Erica, because I do love spending time with my brother. And, wait, Rudy! I We're doing some finger painting. We love that. Okay. Well, I got to go. I'm going to make another Norwalk. Hey, Blue! Rudy! I, I call Blue! Okay, bye! Rudy! <laughs> <laughs> well, while Abby goes off to play with Rudy, we're going to answer some more questions. We got a lot of good ones. So joining us to help, Dr. Rosemary Trulio of the Sesame Workshop. That's the nonprofit organization behind Sesame Street. And Dr. Wanjiko Jurage of the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Welcome back to you both. Thanks for being Thank here. Thank you. Dr. Here Rosemary, uh, we got so many questions from parents basically asking how much information to share with their children. Here's an example. Our household is filled with three young children who are constantly asking why, why, why. My husband and I disagree on how much to explain to them. Do you have any recommendations on how much is too much or how much is not enough? That's a great question. Uh, why questions can be rather taxing for families right now during stressful times. But a why question is a great question because it shows just how curious your children are. And it's through asking questions that they're learning more about what's happening around them. What parents have to remember is to truly listen to what the question is and just answer that question and not give too much information 
because when you do, children can often become overwhelmed by this amount of information and could lead to worry and, and anxiety. The other thing for parents to remember is if you don't know the answer, it's okay to say, I don't know, but let's find out together. And I'm sure that if, they're, if your answers are still not what they're looking for, they'll be asking a lot more why questions. They will keep coming back for more. I that say I is don't for know sure. a lot nowadays, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our next question comes to us from Beth, who's a parent in Tennessee. My five-year-old has been afraid to leave the house because she doesn't want to get the coronavirus. She has had bad dreams about a giant coronavirus germ flying through the backyard and hurting her. She says the reason she fights with her brother in the car is because she's scared when we leave the house. Dr. Jiragi, uh, those are some big fears. It's great that she's able to talk about them, but how can we help manage kids' fears about the coronavirus? Yeah, well, I think you're right. It's great that she's telling her mom that why she's concerned and why she's fighting. I think the thing to tell kids is that we've learned a lot over these past few months. We know how to not get sick. That is staying apart, six feet apart from people who aren't in our house. That means wearing a mask when we go outside. That also means washing our hands. So before they go to the, in the car to go any place, or even just outside to the backyard or the front yard, is remembering all of those things that we know how to stay safe. And even though we cannot see the coronavirus because it's teeny tiny, like Dr. Gupta told us earlier, we know how to protect ourselves from getting it. Yeah, I, th I think it's so important to empower kids to, to do things because I think otherwise you have this sense of helplessness. And by the way, it is teeny tiny. That's a little bit what it looks like, courtesy of a, of a red playground ball and a crown for which the corona gets its name. Um, here's, a, here's another question um, from Triana, who, like many of us, is now balancing a lot of new responsibilities. How do you keep it together while working full time and now becoming a teacher to your grade school student? Mama. <laughs> Erica, you want to take this one? Oh, um, I don't know that I am keeping it together. That's the real answer. Uh, I think surrounding yourself with people who, um, who can be as honest uh, with you as you are with yourself in that it's a struggle. And some days maybe work gets more attention, some days school gets more attention. But at the end of the day, if we can make sure that our kids are loved and that we can answer the questions when they have them for us, then I think we, we plow ahead and That's we move on to day two. But I'm not a professional. I'm just a mom. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough one. Um, you know, even, even the Muppets, as we know, they have a lot of questions. Monsters have questions, too, including Elmo's daddy, Louie. And Louie has this question for you. Oh, hi, Erica. Uh, being at home, Elmo and I have been playing lots of games together. And, well, I've let him win 20 games of Go Fish in a row. Is it okay to always let Elmo win? Louie, your secret is safe with us. Um, Dr. Rosemary, that's such a great question because parents are now not just parent, but they're also playmate. I certainly understand why Louie is letting Elmo win because he probably doesn't want to deal with Elmo's big feeling reaction to losing. But it's during these play moments that parents can help their children build resiliency skills. Children need to have these big feelings. And it's parents' responsibility to help children label what this feeling is, explain why they're having this feeling, but most importantly, help them manage overcoming this feeling so that they could move on and play some more. And in this particular case, play another round of go fish and maybe Elmo then will actually win and have the experience of accomplishing a, a, a great win and also having that sense of excitement. Uh, a lot of parents, guilty, maybe saying no to things that maybe uh, we used to say yes to, like going to the playground. And there are also a lot of parents who, guilty again, are saying yes to things that maybe we'd normally say no to. Maybe you're getting candy in the morning. Maybe you're getting more TV time, sugary cereals. Um, so what advice is there for parents who feel like they're kind of walking on eggshells to avoid a, a feelings explosion, Dr. Draghi? Well, I think it's what you just talked about, Erica, and that is parents need to give themselves a break. This is a really difficult and challenging time. So there might be days when it's like, you know, breakfast for dinner, and that's okay. 
But you also need to keep the routine. This is what Dr. Rosemary was talking about with not letting your kids win every single game because they're still developing during all of this and they need to learn all the lessons they would have learned if we hadn't had this pandemic. So that means that, you know, you can't have cake for breakfast five days a week. Maybe Saturday is gonna be the cake day, but you need to come up with those decisions as a family, maybe make some plans as a family, and that empowers everyone. For all of you parents watching, there are some really phenomenal resources on the parenting section of our CNN website to help you deal with all of this. We still got another question though. This one comes from Akash in White Plains, New York. Can you please create a GoFundMe page so I can donate my money from the piggy bank for the children that lost a parent in COVID-19? Akash is seven. That's what gives you hope, right, mm -hmm. for the future, is to see a sweet, thoughtful young man like that. We know there are so many people in groups who are trying uh, to help. Uh, you can talk to your, uh, to your grown-ups, to parents, to support Sesame Workshop's Critical Needs Response Fund. And you can find more information on that at sesameworkshop.org slash response. You can also text Sesame to 51555. That was really sweet. It does give you hope. And, and to everyone else watching, no matter how old you are, Please remember, there's another way to help. Just be kind. Just be kind to everyone, no matter who they are, where they're from, what they look like. This is a challenging time for everyone. So let's all show a little extra love for one another. That extra love goes a long, long way. Thank you so much, Dr. Rosemary, Dr. Jiragi. It's great to have you back with us this weekend. Thank you for all the great advice. Lots of children have had their outdoor activities like clubs and camps and sports canceled. Coming up, we're going to talk about staying active at home with two very special surprise guests. It's Olympic gold medalist Lori Hernandez and Simone Biles. <laughs> oh, uh, did I ruin the surprise, Erica? Uh, I'm just all so excited. That's okay, Big Bird. We're excited, too. We are going to speak with Lori and Simone. We'll talk to them about staying active and still practicing gymnastics at home. I can't wait. Uh, but first, my friends Abby, Elmo, and Grover have a special song for all the amazing heroes in our neighborhoods helping keep us healthy. Yeah! Look at all these heroes! These are the heroes in your neighborhood! In your neighborhood! In your neighborhood! Yes, these are the heroes in your neighborhood! They're the people that you meet helping everyone on our street! They're the heroes that <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you to all the amazing heroes out there helping and caring for others. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. 